let's talk about opening and beginning Scrivener on the Mac and the iPad. Uh, one will follow the other of course. I'll add the iPad version on to the end of this first one. We're just opening Scrivener and having a look at the um, properties and the setup and opening a blank document. So this video won't take very long. So let's get right to it. There's Scrivener already open and that's how it opens on the Mac, certainly on mine. That's the way I have it set up. So let's have a look at the preferences. These are the first things you'll probably want to look at, but I would strongly advise you not to change much. This is the general section, the startup, reopen projects that were open on quit. Now I've got that one set so that if you have to leave your desk uh, for some interruption, then when you come back and you open up Scrivener again, it'll open up right where you left off. Now, show your template chooser when there's no projects open, and that's these. These are the templates choosers. So they'll come up. Where's my preferences gone? At the back, of course. It opens in a separate window. So there we are again. Automatically check for updates. Well, when it's running, that's what I do. As soon as you open it up, it'll check for an update. Saving. Save after two seconds of inactivity. So if I don't do anything for two seconds, it will automatically save what I'm doing. Author information. You can type in hard data in there if you like, but as it says here, this information is used to fill out author details in title pages and elsewhere. If not filled in, it will be pulled from contacts. So it will find you in contacts and put that data in there. Um, I wouldn't advise changing that at the moment until you know what you're doing. Language, of course, is the system default. If you're typing in English, if your system's running in English, that's the language your Scrivener will be using. There's a few others. Scratchpad, you don't need to worry about that. Shared templates, citations. Now, you can choose what handles your citations. Scrivener at the moment, as near as I can figure out, doesn't have any built-in plugins to interact with these things. So Zotero is one that I'm using on and off. I had the other one, Mandalay, up there a moment ago, and I've just changed it back to Zotero. But we won't go into that. Unless you really need it, then I suggest you look carefully at what you're doing. Separators. Merge documents, empty lines. So anything that's separating text will be an empty line. And you can put in things like that if you like. Don't change it. Services, don't worry about that. Automatic quit, mm, you can do that. But that can be a real pain. If you're sitting there thinking and the whole thing automatically turns off on you, oh, you've got to start it all up again. Warnings, no, you don't want warnings. They just pop up and annoy you. The only one you really need to change there is that one. Editing. Um, you can look at that. Behaviours. Have a look at that. Appearance. Uh, general interface. You can have a look at that. You can change things like dark appearance, backgrounds, page views, quick references, full screen. I wouldn't advise changing any of that to start with. Corrections, don't change any of that to start with. Although if spelling errors abound in your document, <laughs> then perhaps you might want to tick that one. Sharing, rich text, export, sync and conversion. Don't worry about those until you've looked them up. And backup, turn automatic backups on. And the backup location you can set yourself. Now on my Mac I've got Users, Robert, Library, Application Support, Scrivener. And I'm pretty sure you'll find that's the default. 
Don't change it from there because backups are not where you save your documents. Backups are backups. So if you totally trash your document, you can go there and more than likely retrieve your last saved backup. Now, as you noticed, way back here somewhere, saving, auto save every two seconds. So that's related to that. Auto saving and backups when you finish, when you exit, it will back up. When you open, it will back up. Uh, when you import anything, it will back up. And that's where they'll be. I wouldn't advise changing that. Okay, enough of that. You can change those things um, at your own peril. <laughs> Let's close that. Now, getting started. There's a tutorial. And of course, the screen disappears when you click it, but it does come back. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a template. There's your cork board in the Mac version. It doesn't look much like a cork board because it hasn't got, well, the image of the cork behind it. However, that's where it is. Now, we don't want that, so you can close that project. Bang, and you're back to there. Let's center this again so I can see what I'm doing. These are templates that you can use. Oops, let's go back to getting started. Scrivener User Manual, um, good bedtime reading. Interactive Tutorial, well, that's just what it says it is. It will step you through doing lots and lots and lots and lots of things. And Video Tutorials. Let me see if I've got the Video Tutorials down here. Oh, there they are. Scrivener Tutorial Videos, lots and lots of things there. Getting started, reporting research, organising your projects blah 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 there's enough stuff there to distract you from writing for years okay what you want to do you've just opened Scrivener you've done add a quick check of your preferences quick check of your appearance well Scrivener's appearance anyway mind you if you've got a mirror on the desk check your appearance make sure your hair is nice a little bit of lippy on and you can change the theme, purple haze, solarized light and dark. I won't change any of those. There's no point. Deactivate license. Why would you want to? Check for updates. Well, yes, you can check for updates. They don't come through all that often, but automatic checking for updates is turned on on this one. So you don't need to do that. Okay. You want to start a new file, new project. There's open. There's recent projects. There's Oops, things I've been working on already. Favourite projects, nothing in there. You want to start a new project, and this is your first effort. Click on all, or blank. There's one in blank, obviously. These are templates, and you can see there's a template I made. There's a Spy Thriller template I made. Let's have a look at that. Before we get started on writing our own document. Now. This is important. This really messes up a lot of people. Let me cancel out of that for a moment. And what I'll do is I'll start with a blank document. Now this is a template that it opens. It's not actually a document. It's a template for a document. Options down the bottom. Select template as default. Hide getting started. Import templates. If somebody gives you a template or you import a template from my website exam for example put it in your downloads directory and use this options import template you can't just click on a template and open it up you have to import it very important open recent well there's a whole bunch of different things I've been working on and open an existing file if you know where there's a project file you've been working on and it's not in your normal save directory you can open it there not a template but an existing file okay let's open this we're going to start typing double click on it 
and up it comes. Now, as I said before, be very careful about this. Now, what I've done is put all my documents in a Scrivener directory. Now, where is that directory? That directory's on Dropbox. Under Apps, under Scrivener. So if you've got Dropbox running, and I would strongly advise you to have Dropbox running because it's not on your computer. If your computer crashes, the cat gets it, the dog walks all over it, um, your children get on it to play games, and you spill coffee into it, everything's gone. But if it's on Dropbox, there it is, in the Scrivener directory. Now in that directory, you can see I've got all my files. The other important issue with this is, if you're also using iPad on the Mac version, then you can set iPad to use the Scrivener directory, and I believe it does automatically anyway. Once you've set it, it stays there. So I can cancel that. Back to there. Let's have a look at Finder. Open a new folder. Dropbox. Apps, there's the apps directory there, and there's the Scrivener directory there, and a couple of different files in there that I've got in there. And you can see they've got .scriv written after some of them. Some of them have, some of them haven't. I have yet to work out why that is, but they all seem to work fine anyway. But you've got to create that first. So that what you, even before you open Scrivener, go and create that first. Should have put that at the start of the program, shouldn't I? Never mind, there it is there. Because when you come to open a document, blank, pull it up, it says, save as my I can put in my temporary blank document. It doesn't matter if you put these in because you can delete them later. Play around all you like. Delete them later. Now, where are you going to put it? You can put it in, you can say, oh, I'll put it in documents. I'll put it in my documents. I'll put it in their documents. I'll put it here and I'll put it there and I'll put it on the iCloud. Make a special place for it so they don't get mixed up with everything else and call it Scrivener. There's no mistaking Scrivener. If you're looking for my docs, my work, 24th of September 2001, underscore, my old documents, forget it. You will never find them again. Keep them all in one place on the Mac, and your iPad will then be able to find them in Dropbox Apps Scrivener. Easy. And once you've set it, it remembers it. Now, I've already got it set to Scrivener, as you can see. So I'll just cancel that. There's the Scrivener, my temporary document. It will save it there. And I've probably got a test one in here. Second chance for love, spy thriller. Temporary Pulp Fiction. That's one I created yesterday, playing around. And it's Temporary Pulp Fiction. But I'm not going to use that because this one will override it. Let's create a new one. Create. And there it goes. It's loading the template. It brings it up. Let's make that a little bit larger because we nearly finished this section. I'm not going to type a document. There's the draft, untitled document, research. There's nothing in research and there's nothing in trash. What's the point of an untitled document, you ask me? Because if you just click on that once, it comes up and you can call it Chapter 1. Easy. Now you can start typing. You can change all sorts of things in there. No style, Palatino, regular, 13 point. Doesn't matter if it looks quite small on here. It's 13 point text when you print it out. And it's chapter one. 15 words, easy. 
too easy. And there down the bottom is 15 words down there. See? Tells you all about it. Now, you're in here, you're in draft, and you want another chapter. Chapter 1, that's that pinboard appearance there tells you what's in the chapter. You see, I just clicked the plus sign down the bottom left-hand side there, and up pop this. Chapter 2. Easy. Nothing in there. Let's do that again. Bottom left-hand side, the little plus sign. Click on that. There's a blank document. Chapter 3. Let's go into research. There's nothing in research yet. Let's put a document in there. Lead character. Now, there's all your lead characters. This blank document is all you need to start with. That's your template. When you come back, you continue writing in chapter one. When you finish that, you go to chapter two, then you go to chapter three and do some research. Now, that is being saved automatically in Dropbox, Apps, Scrivener, and the document name, my temporary blank document. So let me close that project. Close project. You don't need to save it, back it up, save as, well, you can save it as a template if you like. Whatever you do, don't touch sync. It will automatically sync. Because you can end up with strange results if you're not very familiar with Scrivener. Because that can do things to your documents that you don't want it to do. So let's just close the project. And you saw it then just flick up and it said backing up. If you back, take your video back a little bit, you will see that it says backing up because I've got it set to back up all your documents. Now let's have a look at a spy thriller. What I want you to have a look at is spy thriller. Now where was that thing before? Temporary Pulp Fiction. Mm, do I want to? No, I don't want to do Pulp Fiction. Let, uh, let me check that. All there's a Pulp Fiction 101. Let's go and because if you just temp, if you just click on that, it will put your name up the top there automatically, and it's still in Scrivener. Now this one will overwrite that one. Create, and it says. It already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, I do, because I know exactly what it is. So there it goes, replacing it. Disappears for a moment and comes up there in the, right the left-hand side of the screen, which is a pain. Now, there's the template. This template is the Lester Dent Pulp Paper Master Fiction Plot. Tells you all about how to write pulp fiction. And it's fantastic. If you can't write a story based on this, give it away. There's your corkboard. Part one. Corkboard. And that's what's that's information held at the beginning of each one of these. One, a fistful of trouble. Nothing in there. That information's in the corkboard. So you can have a look at that part one and see what you have to do in each part. Part two, part three, oops, and part four. Research, Lester Dent, write fast, write hard. There's the same document again. That is a template and it's ready for writing. So you go back, a fistful of trouble, let's start the story, and you start it right there. How easy is that? Let's see. Jack Vicious was trying to scale the ladder. No, I don't like that. 
Let's do it in the first person. Okay, there's the start of a story, but it's that easy. You just start writing. Don't get tangled up in the document for hours on end, setting preferences, setting colors, setting fonts, setting text, because you can do all that when you've finished writing. Let's change it from Palatino to uh, Abril Fatface. There you go. And it's regular text. And it's... 20 in size. You can type it in that size if you like. Very easy to see what you're doing. And then you go back and change it to Palatino. Boom, boom, boom. There's Palatino. You don't want it that. 13. And you're back to where you were. Bold? No, you don't want it bold. Who wants it bold? It's regular. There we go. Back to square one. Too easy. Okay. That's the end of this little lesson for Scrivener on the Mac. This will be followed by almost the same process, Scrivener on the iPad. But I want to show you on the iPad because it does look slightly different and may confuse you. But remember, if you've got Dropbox set up, you can find this really easily. Temp Pulp Fiction. Okay, let's close this whole thing down. Close Project. Backing up. Didn't even save it. It just backs it up. How do I know? Let's go. Open recent. Temp Pulp Fiction. Ta -da. Up it comes. And there it is again. Just waiting for you. Too easy. Okay. Close the project. And that's it. Stop the recording. And I'll see you in the iPad section. Coming right. Okay, let's start the recording having a look at the iPad version of Scrivener. And you can see the big S down the bottom. And we click on that. And the first thing it does, it brings up projects. There's a list of projects that I have already. And you can see down there, there's a whole list of things. Let's just go back to Scrivener. Robert and the Mouse. Now that's a story I created today. Let's have a look at it. Draft untitled document. That's what your corkboard looks like in Scrivener on the iPad. Now there's very little difference in this to anything else. What you can see here is it appears to be a very simple interface, but let me show you the importance of creating that Dropbox directory that we created before in Dropbox Apps Scrivener. We can probably see that on here if I go to Finder, Dropbox, Apps, and Scrivener. There's Robert and the Mouse. Now, 
Let me show you what happens if on the iPad I create a project and I call that project, let's move that out the way so you can see what's happening. And I call the project Robert and the Giant Rat. Okay, now this is going to create a new file, not on my iPad, you can tap iPad and it'll create it on the iPad. I don't want it on the iPad, I want it in Dropbox where I can access it from the desktop if I need to. So tap on Dropbox and you think, oh, oh it hasn't shown up there yet, but it will. Let me show you how that works, Robert and the Giant Mouse, go back there and it's syncing with Dropbox. And there it pops up in Dropbox. See how that works? That's so neat. That means you can be sitting in the coffee shop with your iPad and continue working on your story called Robert and the Giant Mouse. There it is in the file list. There's Robert and the Giant Rat, Robert and the Mouse, Temporary Pulp Fiction. Let's have a look at the Temporary Pulp Fiction one. We did that before. The Lester Dent. Pulp Fiction Master, Draft, Part 1, The Fistful of Trouble, and so on. It's almost exactly the same as the desktop version. But the big trick is that, so that you can work between them. The Dropbox, Apps, Scrivener, Directory, and all your files that you work on in there are in Dropbox. Okay, let's close that down because we know that works. If you like, you can go along to there, double click on that, and it will open it. But because you're more than likely on your desktop, it will open in the desktop version, not the iPad version. However, if you're on your iPad, they're all listed there. You can see Dropbox at the top of that binder list and so forth and so on down the list. On my iPad, tap to create a project. You see, you can create a project specifically on your iPad and it will not sync with everywhere else. It will stay on your iPad. Useful, I suppose, but given that iPads you know, do have a, quite a bit of room on them these days, but it will still take up room um, and it makes it somewhat more difficult. There's not a lot else I can say about this. There's your, I just, I just tapped on the question mark, getting started, that's the tutorial. We don't want that. Back to projects. Spy in time, brings up that one. There's the, there's the um, cork board if you like. So the plus sign up in the top right hand corner to create a new project or the big square create project. What could be easier? And you can see listed in the bottom right hand corner. I've got no way of highlighting this because it doesn't show other than on screen here. There's, you can see that Dropbox. That comes up because it thinks it's creating uh, an iMovie movie, but it's not. I've got the movie being created by another method. And even though you think you may be able to click on there, I can't. Because I'm doing this on my iPad and streaming it to the computer desktop monitor. Okay, let's close that down because you know that's happening. There's the movie recording, projects. Let's go back to projects. There's not a lot else I can show you on this. It's as simple as that. Let's close it down. It's closed down. Let's open it up again. That's it. Easy. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, this is only an introduction. My suggestion, when you're creating a project, start with a blank project. Robert and the Giant Rat, there's a blank project. That's what it will default to, to start with. Untitled document, Robert and the Faint and, and the Giant Rat, that's untitled document there. Title. Chapter 1. Done. And there you go. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3. Sidebar, options, binder, corkboard, dark mode, large font, sync now, show app settings. There's your Scrivener app settings. It's, um, it's in your iPad settings, Scrivener. Your version, mobile data. Oh, if you're sitting in the coffee shop, you probably, you may not have access to Wi-Fi. Disable auto lock, never disable auto lock. Dark mode, no. Editor, spelling and substitutions, corkboard navigation, one, and so on and so forth. Syncing and sharing, auto detect changes. Sync projects on close or rename, always check Dropbox on project open, always. Warn if no Wi Fi, always. Convert markdown, all text files. Back to Scrivener and so forth. Remember, those things are found in that screen, bottom left hand corner, the gear wheel, show app settings, sync now, etc. Some of the basic settings are there for this particular template, others are not. Now because I may have made changes, I'm exiting it's syncing, finishing up. Eventually finishing up. Still finishing up. And there we go. Back to square one. Just an introduction and I hope you find it useful. If you do, please go to YouTube and subscribe to the channel because more things will be coming up. Um, you can like it in Facebook. You can go to my website and click on like. You can go to my face, my website and click on subscribe to the channel if you like. That would be very nice. I'm trying to build my subscriber list. So if you find this useful, I'd appreciate a subscription. I don't want any money. Mm, well, I do want money, but <laughs> not from you. Thank you very much.